Okay, this is video number six on how to disassemble and reassemble your Honda engine. Now, in the last video, I told you that we had to stop because of all the special tools that we need to continue on from here that I don't have enough of to distribute out. But we'll talk about a few couple quick things before we start reassembly. The first thing I want you to notice is, is this right here is a crankshaft, and this is what the piston... Um, pushes up and comes down, okay? This right here is called a counterweight to your crankshaft. It just helps balance the engine and stuff uh, so you don't have too much vibration. This right here is a connecting rod cap. Connecting rod cap goes on to your connecting rod. And what it does, the connecting rod cap fastens your connecting rod to your crankshaft. So let's pretend the screwdriver is a crankshaft. The rod comes up and connects there, okay? This is called a connecting rod. Connecting rod has a thing called a piston pin, which goes in right here, that holds the piston to the connecting rod. So you have a connecting rod cap, you have the rod, piston pin, and your piston. Now, if you ever hear of anybody say, oh yeah, my, my car uh, bent a rod, that's what they're talking about. The connecting rod got a bend in it. Whenever you rebuild an engine, a lot of times people reuse their connecting rods because uh, usually it's a flat piece of steel that, you know, does, is not worn out. Um, and they'll replace just the piston. So it, they'll dry that piston pin out, put a new piston on, put it, put it on there, and they'll reuse the connecting rod. Now, connecting rods can twist and they can bend. And remember how I always say you can compress air, but you cannot compress a liquid. Well, if a liquid gets, too much liquid gets down inside of here and that thing comes up to compress that air fuel mixture, that's one reason why it'll bend a rod. Now, all that uh, being said, you got to make sure you check out your connecting rods thoroughly. Okay, this right here is your piston and uh, it's got uh, three landings for rings. Okay, so your top two are going to be compression rings and then your bottom is going to be your oil ring. So this top ring right here, the way you take a ring off, there is actually a ring expander you take and put it in here and you expand this piston ring. I just typically use my hands. You just got to be careful because I have broken these before. They will break. I went ahead and did, took the liberty of taking them all off before this video. So this is your top compression ring. This is your bottom compression ring. And these right here Or your oil rings. Okay? Now, the thing about rings is, you got to watch. When you put your rings on, you'll notice there's a gap. Now, when you can take a piston ring compressor, so we can slide it back down in your cylinder, uh, it's going to compress that, but it's still going to be a gap there. Okay? You do not want your gaps to line up. If you do, this thing will suck oil out of the crankcase and now oil is being burned into your exhaust and you'll have a blue gray smoke coming out or it may even put uh, unwanted pressures in your crankcase so make sure when you put your piston rings on you stagger them one on one side one on the other that way it seals it up and it keeps all this compression uh, all the compression pressure inside your cylinder and combustion chamber. So when you take a piston out, what you, what you would do in this situation, you would take these two tins right here off, drop the cap, and you would push up with your <clears throat> finger, and you can actually push this connecting rod up, which will push the piston out, and your piston would come out of the cylinder just like this, okay? Now, to install it, you would need a thing called a, a piston ring compressor. And it's just basically a sleeve that goes over top of your piston that compresses the piston rings. You put your piston in here, and this one's obviously too big to fit in there. But you would put your piston in here, and you would tap it with a hammer and make it go down. Um, when you guys come back, hopefully we can get into these Ford engines, and I can show you how to do that. All right. So... That's what I want to tell you about pistons. 
Um, typically, when, you, when people rebuild engines, they may hone this cylinder, which is they put this on a machine and it cuts it and it cuts it straight because if, let's say you rebuild this, uh, let's say you're rebuilding engines and let's say you're like, okay, I'll just put new piston and rings in. That's what they used to do back in the older, olden days. And it would work for a little bit, but the problem is, is that this cylinder becomes, instead of being in a circle, becomes a little more oblong. And we're just talking like thousands of an inch here, okay? And when that happens, you won't get as good a ceiling. So to properly rebuild an engine, you would want to send it to a machine shop, an engine rebuilding place, and have them hone this out. And then they can find pistons that will fit inside there that you would need. Um, typically, the bigger the cylinder is, the more power it can make. So a lot of people like to do like the maximum, like, oh yeah, you can take 35 thousandths off instead of 20, do it. Gets you just a little bit more you know, horsepower. The problem with that is, is that you can't get it so thin with these um, cylinders. And if you do get thin and you want to keep reusing the engine, you got to put a thing called a sleeve in here, which is just basically a metal sleeve and you press it in there and then you put your piston inside that. This being an aluminum block, I doubt you'd ever want to hone this one though. All right, we're going to put our oil pan back on. And if you remembered, I made a mark on this thing to help me reassemble right there. Got to move that out of the way, little throttle thing here. Okay, now if you look on page 2-4 your repair manual, you're going to see it says bolt and nut, torque specifications, standard torque values, what it says. So this 12 millimeter head bolt is actually an 8 millimeter bolt. So this right here is 8 millimeter. You know it takes a 12 millimeter socket to take it off there? This is actually an 8 millimeter. And according to this, <clears throat> Bolt and nuts that are eight millimeter are 15 foot pounds, okay? Now, we're gonna put this in here. And the first thing you wanna do is start them all by hand. So I put those in real quick just for the sake of time. Now a lot of you guys have a torque wrench that looks like this. Make sure whatever torque wrench you're using, you're using the correct uh, measuring. So this one right here says foot pounds. So the way this one works, I'm going to go right here and I'll pull this thing down. And as soon as that needle hits foot pounds, 15 foot pounds, Right there, 15 foot pounds, and that's how that works. I don't typically like these. I'd rather much do the. I much rather do the click type. If you have a click type, this one right here is in inch pounds. Okay, so if you're measuring inch pounds, well, there's 12 inches in a foot. So 12 times 15 would be 180 inch pounds. Okay, so I'm going to start right here and click it up. If you have a click type torque wrench, make sure when you're done at the end of the day, you reset it back to zero. Okay. Put it on here. I'm going to go, kind of like I'm putting a tire on. Okay, it broke. There you go. All right. I want you to stagger these bolts when you um, tighten this down. So do this one, then like this one, then this one, that one. Let me know if you have any questions. Stop right there. Thank you.